Hello, YouTube. <clears throat> Here again with another camera. This is the Kodak 35RF. Um, the following slideshow uh, shows you some of the work I did to it. Um, it'll show taking apart the front end of the camera and me cleaning up um, the outer works. As I thought I was going to have to tear this thing all the way down because the uh, shutter blades were stuck when I got it. And I just assumed that I was going to have to just tear the whole thing apart, reset the shutter leaves, clean them and all that. It turns out I didn't have to. Uh, once I got the front off and I got down to the, the first layer of, of shutter works, um, whatever was sticking or stuck, I was able to get it loose with pretty minimal effort. Uh, so I stopped there and I just cleaned it up, reassembled it, and here you have it. Yeah, and now in working condition, the only problem with this camera is the front lines, the front element, the outside uh, has been eaten up probably by fungus, I suppose, uh, or perhaps um, abrasive cleaning. I don't know. Uh, it's a very cool camera. There's a lot of cool factor in it. Uh, it's one of the more unusual cameras I have. Uh, it's a the second generation of the Kodak 35, um, and this one, the earlier version, didn't have the coupled rangefinder. This one does, and that's what this sticking out thing here is. Uh, the camera looks very much like some and some probably rookie engineer got handed the job at the last minute of turning their old Kodak 35 into a coupled rangefinder uh, 35 RF and this is the best he could do with probably the, the no time he had to work with so it has a, a very unique appearance to it it's, uh, I suppose in its day uh, it would have looked very space agey with this thing on the side of it and, and just the uh, awkwardness of the whole camera. There's nothing ergonomic about it. Um, it's a it's a it's heavy for its size. It uh, sits in your hand <clears throat> like pretty much any of the cameras of the time. Uh, controls are not particularly user friendly but it, it's just super cool. Uh, it's it was uh, produced for a number of years. It was made to compete with some of the bigger better names that were doing coupled rangefinder cameras and uh, I guess it wasn't really much competition for the other companies um, and eventually Kodak dropped it and it was replaced by something else anyhow uh, this is the finished product <clears throat> from the following uh, uh, slideshow that I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to put some notes in it uh, of my observations and uh, if you happen to get one of these um, it probably it stands a pretty good chance of being a working machine because while it was not cheap in its day uh, I was going to do a comparison of its original selling price uh, relative to its selling price in 2018 dollars uh, I didn't get to it it doesn't matter you can do that yourself uh, but this was not a cheap camera and while it's not it doesn't have all the nice refinements of better cameras uh, it's it's heavy it's built solid uh, everything is metal uh, probably could stand up to a certain amount of abuse um, this one, I don't know where it was stored or how it was stored, but it had uh, some, some of the, uh, I'm not sure if this is a, an aluminum coating or what, but whatever it is, whatever this coating is on the metal uh, is blistered. And there was this layer of, of brown stuff. I don't I have no idea what it was. It was stuck all over the metal parts. Uh, I wound up having to, to clean that off. And there's a couple frames in the slideshow of that. And it took some effort to get all that goo whatever that stuff was off it but it came out pretty well and there's a couple of comparison pictures 
in the slideshow. Um, you can find out pretty much anything you want to know about these things online. Uh, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. It's the aperture goes from f16 to 3.5. It has shutter speeds from 200, a uh, two hundredth of an inch to a of uh, two hundredth of an inch, two hundredth of a second to a tenth of a second, and also bulb and time. And uh, all this, the shutter speeds seem to work. I had a little trouble reassembling this and getting all the, sh the shutter speeds to be correct. And it wasn't really a mechanical problem, it was a me problem. Because this outer disc here, the serrated one, has to go down over a number of pins and levers that have to work together in order to make the, the timing work properly. I had to do that probably three or four times before I got it right. Uh, and then it's working. I haven't run any film through it yet. I'm not sure if I will with that front lens being as messed up as it is. It doesn't look bad when you just hold it in your hand and look at it, but when you look through it into a light you can see uh, it's it's got some kind of marking all over it from whatever happened to it. Um, but as you can see in the slideshow I had to reaffix the mirror so that the uh, the uh, split image would work and I've still got the shoulder straps around here somewhere I'm going to put that back on uh, but this is it this is a Kodak 35 in working condition uh, very simple very sturdy uh, and hopefully uh, a lot of fun to shoot so till next time